Hello, everyone. We are here today to talk to you about innovation and creativity, and in particular, the importance of children's creativity. Fifty years ago, if a friend of yours would have said, "You know what? I have an idea," and then told you about a smartphone, you would probably give it a laugh. In these days, it was out of our imagination that what you can see in this picture. Could actually fit into your own pocket, or what you really see here is just a screen, because the actual computer takes up an entire room. And on top of this, we have the weather. We got games, newspapers.、Uh, you see what I'm going for. So, what qualifies us to dismiss the children's ideas, hopes, and dreams regarding having their own jetpack or even a personal teleporter in the future, as impossible or even improbable? If someone, on the other hand, would have said, "You know what? I believe in the future, the trains will be a little bit faster and the cars will be a little bit more fuel efficient," I doubt the reaction would have been the same. Because there might be several reasons to why the development in the field of transportation hasn't kept the same pace as in other fields, we will learn more about this today. But what do we want in the future, and what does the next generation think about their future needs and desires? To figure this out, we, a group of five KTH students studying product development, visited school classes in ages between seven and fifteen. To find inspiration for future transport systems, we wanted to investigate what the children find important in the travels today, what they think they will find important in the future, and most of all, how do they want to travel in the future. Unfortunately, it's never as easy as just to ask them what they think, and our methods had differed as much as the results. To get the youngest ones, the seven-year-olds, to think about transportations. We set them down in groups of four to five students and asked them to draw their school together in the middle of a paper, sized huge. Piece of cake. Further on, when we asked them to draw their houses at the outskirts of the paper and then draw their route to school, this apparently equals problem. Because here, little Johnny announced that he actually lives on the other side of the paper, and as you can see, his route to school ends up in nowhere. And little Matilda announced that her house didn't even fit into the small space that was given, so we had to add an extra paper. It's pretty hard to disrupt the view of what the children already know to be true. For example, in this case, the very exact geographical locations of their own homes. Later on, when we started talking about the future, the world lay at their feet, and everything was impossible. We started to talking about what they would like to become: oh, an astronaut, because you know space is cool, or a veterinarian, because puppies are so cute. And the same answers applies when we started to talking about how they would like to travel in the future. The flying skateboard was invented, and roller coasters and slides would take you everywhere. Because let's face it, who doesn't want, ha- want to have fun while traveling? But then,、uh, then again, of course, someone also invented the fuel-efficient car, driven by garbage. When we got out to the older kids, nine and eleven,、uh, it was clear that they started to form more boundaries regarding what is conceivable and realistic.、Uh, however, once we all got into the right mindset, the creative ideas started flowing. The magic, the teleporter was invented, which we'll actually learn about more later on today. We also learned how to. Ride with underground tubes and how to maneuver the gigantic floating mushroom. <laughs> But some children thought these aren't realistic, and instead imagined 
an environmental car, but this garbage stinks, can't it be fuel and water? The oldest ones visited, the teenagers, added another spectra to this problem, since they realized the growing demands of transportations in the world and the importance of public transport systems. Here we first heard about the clip-on cars, where you simply stack cars on top of each other to simplify commute and reduce gridlocks. Another solution to this problem were the flying cars or the cableways. Because for people like us, it's obvious that transport systems occupy common areas, like roads or railways, but not for teenagers. Their solutions actually clear the ground from the vehicles. And sorry, we don't have any pictures regarding this, since, you know, it's not cool to draw as a teenager. <laughs> no matter how hard we try to get the children to think outside the box, someone, of course, reinvented the super-duper fuel-efficient car, this time driven by water. Uh, it seems deep, deeply rooted amongst most children that if you want to go somewhere, you have to use a car, a bus, or perhaps a train. Another thing we noticed was the older the students got, the more ideas we received uh, regarding public personal flying advices. Flying has been a dream for mankind for a long time, for as long as religion. Take Icarus, for example, and considering the jetpack at the 84 Olympics, why can't we buy our own set of wings? Another thing, it's, it seemed the older we get, the more aspects we have to take into consideration. Our ability to be creative decreases. Take us, for example. We're studying at one of the most creative programs at our school, at one of the universities regarded best in the countries. At one of our courses, we were asked, asked to form groups and come up with innovative solutions for given problems. Seven groups were formed and asked to generate three ideas regarding how to increase the working ergonomics for ambulating veterinarians. This would have given us a, an amount of totally 21 unique solutions. You know how many we got? Five. Is it that great minds think a lot, alike? Or have all these years in school simply ruined our imagination? I bet that if we would have given the same problems to the kids, we would have received at least 20 unique solutions. What we want you to bring with you from today is that even though it's the adult that, that builds for the future, it's the children that will have to live in it, and the possibilities are endless. Right? Thank, Thank you. you.